Tonight's class is going to be on um, Tai Chi Gong, Prana, Kutalini, Sexual Energy, and the Holy Spirit. What we're going to find out is that the Holy Spirit is sexual energy. It's the Kutalini, it's Prana, it's Tai Chi Chi Gong. Okay? Now, what we mean by the Holy Spirit, within Luke, the 12th chapter, starting at the ninth verse, actually let's go at the 8th, and it states, Also I say unto you, whatsoever shall confess me before men, him say the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. And whatsoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall also be forgiven of him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, is, it shall not be forgiven. Now, why is it that if you curse God and you curse the Son of Man, it's forgiven? But yet, when it comes to cursing the Holy Spirit, it's unforgiven. What is the science here? Because we go to the Old Testament, we go to the Old Testament, and it say, it say that um, you take the Lord God um, name in vain, and if you ask for forgiveness and repent, do a, a burnt offering, it's forgiven of you. Right here, it says that the Son of Man, if you curse the Son of Man, out, you know what I'm saying? It's forgiven of him. But when he says right here, but unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. So why is blaspheming the Holy Spirit is unforgivable? It's because the Holy Spirit is the mother principle in which that established all things in the universe. She is the all pervasive spirit. She's the all pervasive energy. All things in which that was created comes through her. She's the creatrix. Okay? The universe comes and stems from out of her womb, as well as the mind and the physical body, along with first the brain of the human being, it stems from out of the womb of the mother. Because, as you know, the head of the child supposedly comes out first, out of the womb, out of the, um, out of the canal. So that represents that the head of the individual is where the soul or this Holy Spirit originally manifested at. However, from that standpoint, it manifests from not just from the head area, but all the way through those lower six chakras, making up seven chakras in all. Now, as we know that the Kundalini energy dwells in the base chakra, or what's called the root chakra. Now, that color is usually the color of red, but it's also um, um, seen in some documentations as the color of white. The reason why it's the color white is because the Kundalini energy, when the Ida and the Pingala nerves are activated, which are called the sacral nerves, which is just like Jesus and the two thieves in which they sat between, the Shoshuna, when it's activated, it moves the Kundalini energy, I should say when the Kundalini energy is activated, it moves through the Shoshuna. And the Shoshuna, is the what is called the spinal central column. It's like a little hollow area in which the, those 32, um, 31 nerves go up and is and um, um, up through that um, um, hollow area. And the Kundalini energy looks like a mercury, a whitish mercury fluid. So that's where they say that um, sometimes that color is that of a whitish color because it looks like a whitish mercury color. That's how the Kundalini energy looks. So. This same energy in which that moves through those 31, 33, 31 plus 2 external nerves, making 33 nerves of all, and through those 33 vertebrates up to what is called the medulla oblongata, which is to, at the back of the head, okay, and then that shoot that beams over to the cult nerve, and then to the pineal gland, which sits over the third ventricle in the brain, is how we become self-illuminated. Because that energy goes from the hypothalamus gland to the pituitary gland and then to the pineal gland. Those three particular um, organs or glands in the brain. And those organs, now for example, the hypothalamus gland is the seat or the center of pleasure. That particular gland is what gives you the ability in order to enjoy sexual pleasure. Is the hypothalamus gland. In order to be truly in an orgasmic state, that means that energy has to shoot forth from the occult nerve to the um to the um to the um to those three particular glands. 
and particularly light up the hypothalamus gland in order for a true orgasm to take place. Okay? Like last night was mentioned about um, the difference between um, ejaculation and orgasm, especially within men. And that's the truth. Okay? Uh, uh, just to ejaculate and orgasm is different. All right? Um, a man, he can actually feel energy being pulled forth from every part of his body when he actually orgasms. Okay? Now, that's, that's, that's the truth of the matter. What it is, though, is that all of this energy is feminine energy. It's feminine energy within the female, and it's feminine energy within the male. This energy is what has us to connect the lower half of our lower nature to our higher half of a higher nature, our upper nature. And by combining both natures, we become more what is called unified. And it creates what is called a uraeus, which is um, this auric fill, okay, or this halo around the top of our heads. Now, what happens is that when you get into the sexual energy, for example, let's go into the sexual energy. There's a technique in which that men would do with women in which that's called the nine stroke technique, okay? The nine stroke technique is a technique in which that, let me see, I'll show you on the board here. Just a um, partial um, list. I'm gonna put the rest of it up on the board. But for example, the man's penis is actually what is called the magic wand, because actually there's an energy in which that extends from out from the um, penis is what is basically um, the auric fill, and this auric fill is actually what helps ignite the um, life force energy within the woman. Okay, that's if he ejaculates. We won't get into the ejaculation in a second, but for example. Um, the technique is called the nine stroke technique and you start out with a count of nine okay um, actually it would be eight um, shallow strokes and one deep thrust yeah but um, it would be eight shallow <laughs> strokes and two deep and one deep thrust and basically what that and uh, what the shallow strokes does what they do is tap into um, the woman's G spot because the G spot lies about an inch and a half to three inches inside of the vaginal area so the shallow strokes actually help um, um, stimulate the G-spot, okay? Um, the deep thrust, um, basically what you will find is that the penis and what's the vaginal canal has reflexology. In other words, the head of the penis um, <laughs> is the heart. The rim of the penis, which I'm going to put that on the board, but let me, let me finish this and I will get into that too. So the um, second part would be seven um, shadow strokes and two deep thrusts, and then you would do that a, another set of two. So it would be a set of two, okay? The next would be a set of three, and that would be um, six, deep th um, six shallow strokes and, and three deep thrusts, okay? And this is what the man is doing in order to get the woman in order to go beyond um, the fourth state, okay? The woman can orgasm at the fourth state, However, if the man wants to um, um, give her the ability you know, to multiple orgasm, because the more um, that the woman um, 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 orgasm, the more yin energy she releases, which is more healing energy. It's healing energy. It's magnetic energy that she is releasing. And that magnetic energy can be used as a healing energy. <coughs> okay? That's what this is all about. That's what sex is all about. Marvin Gaye wasn't joking when he said sexual healing. That's what this is all about, is the healing aspect of sex. Is it healing her or him? Both. Both. Okay. It's both. Because, see, the more that you can release, so in other words, 
remember, the hypothalamus gland, like I said, is the pleasure center in the brain. So that means that the more that you can help release that brain fluid, the more it connects those dendrites and synapses in your brain, unifying you and causing your left and right hemisphere of the brain to um, um, unify and come together. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we'll get into the positions too. So uh, I'll get into that in a second. But right here, sets so, on um, four, it'll be, um, excuse me, um, five, um, five um, shallow and four um, sets of um, deep thrust, or four deep thrust, and it'll be a set of four. Okay, the next one will be um, five, I mean, excuse me, four um, shallow and five deep thrusts. Okay. Okay. The next is three shadow strokes and six deep thrusts. And that would be a set of six. The next is two shadow strokes and seven deep thrusts and a set of seven. The last would be one shadow stroke and eight um, deep, um, um, deep thrust um, um, strokes and it would be a set of eight. And on the last one would be nine sets of deep strokes. No shallow strokes. Okay, that's how it would go. Now, usually, um, the, uh, to say the least, most men can't finish this. So what happens is that there's an organ, or better yet, an area that sits right up under between the strontium sac and the anus is a little indenture. It's called a perineum. P-E-R-I-N-U-M. The perineum. Neum, excuse me. There it is. P-E-R-I-N-I-U-M. Perineum. This is also known as the million dollar spot. If the woman can reach behind the man and press this area as um, he's about to or about to um, ejaculate or orgasm. Then instead of ejaculating, he would ejaculate. So in, instead of evolution, he would involute. Okay. Now what happens is that when a man ejaculates, that semen travels up. Let me show you here. Matter of fact, I'll show you a better picture than this. There's a little sketch here, <laughs> but this is it. What happens is that when a man ejaculates, the energy from the sperm travels up the spinal column through those 33 nerves, or maybe yet through the 31 nerves inside, and then the energy from the outside of those nerves, which is the last two, which is called the sacral nerves, which give you 33 nerves. And it travels up these 33 vertebrates. Okay, these 33 vertebrates. Now what happens is that as this semen is traveling up, sperm traveling up, what happens is that it goes back up and becomes re-nurtured by the Father, which are in heaven. This energy becomes part of what is called the fluid in the third ventricle of the brain. This fluid in the third ventricle of the brain is, like we, like I said last night, is the um, is the um, River Jordan, just like Jesus getting baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan. That's what this is all symbolic to. Is something in which that actually happens within the physical body. The semen <coughs> itself is you, in which that you win the race out of. 
777,777 cells. Sperm cells. And supposedly the sperm cells controls what? The XX chromosome as well as the XY chromosome. In other words, masculine and female. Come to find out that scientists have tested the sperm and found out that they do have sexual characteristics in which that masculine and female. But what they found out also is that most of it is dominantly female and that within the womb of the mother for the first three weeks, that child is actually feminine. The testes of the child has not fallen yet from out of the, um, out because right now the testes are inside just like the woman's ovaries are. They have to descend. Sometimes, even after the child is born, the testes still, one of the testes or both might still be up in there and they have to descend. That's just like the what? Falling from heaven. The word, do you know that the word test or testes means man? So when they talk about man falling from heaven, they talk about the testes or the testicles falling out from just like the woman's ovary, because that's what the actual that's what the um the testes are, are nothing more than ovaries. Okay? And they fell from out of heaven to where? To earth. So that's even a um a character, so that's even a um a correspondence between that scenario. And that the word testy, which is short for testicle, means man. So you get the word New Testament, Old Testament, in which that it speaks about the old body of man, and now the New Testament speaks about the new body of man. Who was the old man in the Old Testament was Adam. Who's the new man in the New Testament is Jesus. You get what I'm saying? So the whole thing is about being baptized. The sperm is baptized here in the third ventricle in which that is overlooked by the pineal gland. The pineal gland sits right at the edge of the third ventricle and overlooks. Just like if you was looking at it from the front, it would be something similar to you talking about Jesus walking on water. Mm -hmm. That's what this whole scenario about Jesus walking on water and everything is coming from, is actually if you split open the brain, you would see that scenario. Okay? So the sperm is baptized by the pineal gland, or as it appears to be, John the Baptist baptizing Jesus. So the sperm in which that wins the race out of these 777,777,777 cells becomes you here. So you are automatically born the Christ. You already, all of, you, you automatically born the Christ. You come here as a Christ. Cause the sperm had a journey from where? Bingo. In other words, at one time, what they found out is that semen fluid is brain fluid. Mm. Scientists have found this out. That semen is brain fluid. So now if semen is brain fluid, then that means that this fluid had to travel, what, you got prostate? Because right here at the perineum is the prostate gland. That's the reason why you press this perineum, because that attaches you into the pressure of the um, prostate gland. That prostate gland helps stop and cut off the flow of what? Semen. Because they're from the prostate gland in which that what? The ejaculation helps take place through the vest deferens and then eventually um, 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 from, the, um, from the testes to um, um, out the penis. Y'all get what I'm saying? So you got prostate fluid. Prostate. You got prostate fluid. You got spinal fluid. And you have cerebral fluid. Okay? Now, that means you got three different types of fluid in which that Cerebral fluid is brain fluid. Just put it that way. Okay, brain fluid. That's what fills those four of the five cavities inside or chambers in your brain. Is this watery um, cerebral fluid. This water. That's the reason why they tell you 
that whenever you dehydrate it, it's the brain in which that suffers the most from dehydration is because the brain um, 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 actually is composed of over 90% of water. Your physical body is only composed of 75% of water. So that means that your brain needs more water supply. So whenever you are dehydrated and the brain suffers from this um, lack of water, then you have a tendency in order to um, malfunction. Because it's your pineal gland in which that controls all of the other endocrine gland system. Or better yet, all of the other endocrine glands. Endocrine glands. In other words, it can tr the, high, the um, pineal gland controls the hypothalamus gland, the thalamus gland, the pituitary gland, the thyroid, the parathyroid glands, the thymus gland, the pancreas, the, the um, Matter of fact, let me, let me put this up before everybody can know where the chakras lie at too in this particular area. Okay. This is the root or the base. Right here near the prostate gland, right here near the perineum is the base. That's within man. Within the woman is the uterus or the womb. Okay? Um, um, this area within the woman is the G spot. So if the man will put his uh, finger about an inch and a half to three inches inside of the woman's womb and feel upright, he will feel that um, um, that particular indenture in which that is the G spot in which that actually helps with the um, um, with, um, vaginal orgasm. The woman can also have what is called a clitoris orgasm, okay, in which that she actually shoots fluid from her clitoris. Wait a minute, what did you say? The G-spot is what kind of orgasm? Vaginal orgasm. Vaginal. Then you have a, um, a clitoris orgasm. So a woman actually have two different types of orgasm. The clitoris orgasm smells something like a mixture of pee and a mixture of um, uh, some other type of um, 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 amino fluid. Okay? Now, the semen, in one teaspoon of semen, check this out, in one teaspoon of semen, it has more protein in one teaspoon of semen of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, in one teaspoon of semen of, of, new, um, is, um, of two New York Porter steaks. Okay? Six oranges. Eight eggs. <laughs> that you, that you, sounds you, like a meal. <laughs> you hear this? You hear this? This yeah. is how much. This is how much protein. Now, protein makes it made up of amino acids. Amino acids are called the building blocks of life. So that's why they say that whenever man ejaculates, he loses his life force because two New York porter steaks, mm -hmm. six oranges, eight eggs, a cup of milk. Mm -hmm. That's what he's losing. Every time he just in one tablespoon of semen, so that's a lot of life. Cause now you know a uh, 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 fertilized eggs by chicken. Shoot, eight eggs. Shoot, that's that could be eight chicks. You get what I'm saying? Fertilized eggs of chickens. That would be eight chicks coming into this world, mm -hmm. and this man is losing eight chicks <laughs> plus six oranges, <laughs> a cup of milk. <laughs> And two New York Porter House steaks. Man, you might as well throw in the whole damn cow. <laughs> right, and you can't eat all that in one setting. Not the average person anyway. So just imagine all of that being lost through just just through a man going out there and just giving it all away like that. Just thinking that he's the Mac. This nigga think he's the Mac and he's Mac and this nigga killing his damn self. And he don't have no clue that he's doing it. Has no clue that he's doing it. But that's what he's doing. He's killing himself. It's Rainbow Finn Hamlet that um, um um that Shakespeare wrote that I um that I um that I taste death a thousand times in your lap. In other words, he's saying he's saying that I died a thousand times in your lap. In other words, I done died a thousand times, yo. Every time that me and you consummated this this marriage, <laughs> which we call sex, I done chewed. Give up my life force a thousand times. So this is the key um, 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 to um, some of this information. Mm -hmm. 
that um, y'all gonna be learning about as the um, as y'all go into this um, women's group. Oh shoot, let me put this end up in here. Dave, they, put this end here. They, they go to end. Endo Grand Clan. Yeah, there you go. Make <laughs> sure I got some of this spelling right. Just a little bit. <laughs> but um, right here at the thymus gland, like I said, the sacral nerve, all of these, the prostate gland, all of these are glands in which that secrete hormones. All of these endocrine glands secrete hormones. The only way in which that it can be an endocrine gland is if it secretes hormones. The pineal gland excretes the chemical melatonin and serotonin. Okay? The pituitary gland um, is secretes um, 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 HGH, which is human growth hormone. That gives you the ability in order to um, grow through puberty. Okay? Um, um, the thymus gland, the um, thyroid glands helps with the metabolism, thyroxin. Okay, the um, thymus gland that deals with, um, with the um, antibodies and the T cells helps with the immune system. The pancreas, oh, insulin. This is the hormones now. Okay, um, the sacral nerve, okay, um, that helps with DNA manufacturing. In other words, it helps with the renewing and the rebuilding of your physical structure. The prostate gland, oh, shoot, you know what that is? <laughs> That's the way. The semen, testosterone within men, um, within a woman, um, 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 that would be your womb because the prostate gland is nothing but a shrunken womb, but that would be the womb in which that, um, the uterus in which that actually within a woman, that is produced what? Estrogen, which is the hormone. So this is how all of these intrusion glands secrete these particular hormones, okay? This is all important in sex because what if you are deficient in one of these hormones? Do you know that the science is that the words in which that you say in sex has power? Hey, 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 whatever the case is, pull my hair. Whatever. <laughs> but we we right here say the word. Obviously, the sound in which that comes out the most during sex is the area in which that needs to be healing, mm. subconsciously, mm. or it could be consciously. So what about when you cuss? Oh, oh, oh! I'm getting to that in a second. I'm, I, hey, I ain't finished. This just the beginning. <laughs> oh wow! This just the beginning. All right. So O sound, the O, O. That sound goes to healing what? The navel chakra. For the navel chakra is intimately connected to the sacral chakra. Okay. Now, well, sometimes they will. Now, the U sound, of course, that goes to healing way. Within the man, it's the prostate gland. Within the woman, it's the um the whole vaginal area, the genitalia area, um as we call it. Um, it would be also the ovaries. So whenever the, um, the woman say, oh, ooh, ooh, that type of noise, that goes into helping, you know what I'm saying, the, for the male who says it, or for the woman who says it, this particular area. Whenever you use the word shit, it's the liver. You're tapping into the liver. The liver is healed from the sh sound. So we say, oh, shit. You done damn oh shit, you done added damn healing into the damn navel chakra, into the damn um, solar plexus. See, this is about healing. So this sounds in which you make while you're having sex, in which that heals these particular organs. But we lost the science of this, so therefore, we got to go back. Okay? Oh, oh, that, oh, second. Of course, we know the ah sound heals what? The heart. You know what I'm saying? That heart sound, that heals the heart. You know what I'm saying? So that means that when that sound is being made, subconsciously there's some type of blockage which that needs to be removed from there. Well, the man's job is to use his magic wand is to help push forth that energy within the woman to help her remove those blockages. 
That's what his magic wand is for, is to help remove the blockages while being intimate. And in the same process, the woman will release herself unto him, submit herself unto him, and build up a force field of yin energy around him. And actually, they will become one force field. They will be no longer two separate beings. They will become one. And that's what's meant in the Old Testament, that when a man um, leaves his um, father's mother's house, that, um, and he, um, he goes off with his wife, that I mean, his wife becomes what? One flesh. Okay? That one flesh, that's what that is speaking of. It's the signs of how to um, um, become so intimate and release. And see, in order to release yourself, I mean, in order to truly release, women have to let go of the baggages. Males have to let go of the baggages. They can't go into an uh, intimate, um, 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 uh, intimate setting, you know what I'm saying, with holding grudges and, 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 um, and feeling, you know what I'm saying, like this is a duty and this is not something which that's going to be pleasurable and healing. This, this is the wrong state of mind as you're going into it, because what you're going to do is end up harming yourself. Okay? Because like, the like same way that you can bring... you got a headache, like you now, really now, have a headache? No, you got a headache, then that, that then, then I recommend having sex. Because for simple fact, it is, it's a known fact that sex can um, um, stop pain. Hmm. You can't enjoy pain, you can't enjoy pleasure and pain at the same time. Because remember, I told you that the um, hypothalamus gland is the center of pleasure, but it's also the center of pain. So that means that, you know what I'm saying? It can't be done. Then, and plus, in the um, pituitary gland produces um, 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 endorphins. Endorphins are what? Pleasure. You know what I'm saying? That helps what? Ease pain, don't it? So that means that whatever this triangle is going on here, up in this brain area, and that energy is hitting the pineal gland, the hypothalamus gland, and the pituitary gland in that triangular position, then all of these chemicals are being released and there's no possible way that you can feel pain. So that's why headaches are um, healed during sex, migraines, you know what I'm saying? That's why the nostrils become unclogged if the person has sinus problems, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, all of these things are released once this energy is, um, is transferred from this particular area to this particular area. As this equivalent energy is brought up through here and is illuminated. Okay? Now, also, you know, you know, the A sound, you know, um, right here, you know, the E sound, the I sound, you know, you know, any of those sounds helps goes into healing those particular organs. Usually, if you notice that during sex, you don't never reach the highest um, um, sounds in sex. Well, yeah. Yeah. So what is what is yes? That's that's the E. That's the E sound. Oh, oh okay, okay. But usually, it deals with the healing. Most of the time, when you're intimate, you deal with the healing factors of the lower nature. The reason why is because it's usually where those blockages becomes crystallized at, and those blockages need to be removed. So usually in a state of sex, we usually just with the oh or the ooh or the shit or the ah. Those sounds are usually the ones in which that usually most people stick with. But like like the queen said, usually if you can go past those particular chakras and those are cleared out while you're having sex. Now you got to understand is that did you see how long I, I, it took me to put all that shit up on the board with the um, nine stroke technique? That's because that's how long the man's supposed to be able to last in order to um, um satisfy the woman. It's through wow. that whole technique. Well, how long did that take? How long did that whole technique take? You want to know the truth? <laughs> about an hour and 15 minutes. Oh. And that's without stopping. <laughs> oh. Now, that's just that technique. If you can learn how to master that technique, then actually the sexual intercourse can last up to three hours, if not more. And definitely after three hours, the woman definitely will have had some multiple orgasms by that time. So that means everybody come out of that happy. <laughs> no damn black just is built up like, that the game, that the game, that the game do shit. <laughs> <laughs> he healed my liver, he healed my liver. <laughs> now what about uh, 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 scream, uh, screamers? Like, oh, yeah. like uh, scream, you, you know. Uh, holler. Those, those are the, those are the higher ones. <laughs> That's when so you. So what is that? The, when you holler, that means that you have definitely released, been released from your lower chakras, 
in those particular sounds. You're now ready to, you are now ready to totally submit yourself unto the man. If you notice, that's the only time that men and women actually submit themselves unto each other is during the time of sex. Otherwise, y'all fussing each other and like, that nigga ain't shit, or, or, or you know, uh, you know uh, the man, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying, so, you, know, something, you know what I'm saying? The only time that people really get to be really intimate and really, you know what I'm saying, let their guard down is in the whole, is in the totality of sex. You know what I'm saying? You got to be, you got, now think about it. You got to, you got to, you got to really think about, you know what I'm saying? Remember, we done heard stories about um, Lorraine and Bobby. <laughs> oh, yeah. And John, and John, and, 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 and Wayne Bobby, you know what I'm saying? John Wayne Bobby. You had to think, you know what I'm saying? He got his stuff straight. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know that, you know what I'm saying? That's, hey, if you know that that alone, you know what I'm saying, would definitely put you at the, you have to submit yourself. Because that's a lot of submission, you know what I'm saying, for a woman to do and for a man to do. Of course, those things, as we know, has happened according to reports. <laughs> but this is the other signs, too, is that the positions in which that we do, why we having sex, is also have healing aspects to them. Okay. What we call the sixty nine position is actually um, what they call, I guess you would say, you know, for the for the terminology oral sex. And the science is that whenever you're working with oral sex, what you're doing is actually is performing a form of reflexology. Is that actually that's what it is. All right. For example. Okay. Represents the heart. Okay, if the woman um, stimulates only the head of the penis, then it could possibly cause the man to have a heart attack. <laughs> and that's the straightforward truth of the matter. You know what I'm saying? Especially if he um, has a weak heart, he's been through, um, um, well, yeah. If, um, if you mean like just, just play with it, just tease it, and no. don't. Just suck in that part. Just, just, just only just, that just, part. Just only that part. Right. Oh, okay. Right, right. It can never just be one part. It has to be the um the, the whole shaft and the well of the head has to be, you know, stimulated in order for all of the organs in order to become um I guess you would say uh um fulfilled. Okay. I guess you would say. Okay. Right here, the realm of the penis is the liver. Okay. The next is the lungs. The next is the spleen. And the pancreas. Okay. So, these particular organs, you know what I'm saying, are being stimulated by oral sex. When the man licks the clitoris and plays with the clitoris, 
he does the exact same thing. All right, for example, the head of the clitoris is just like because it's the miniature penis, actually, you know, in which that, that's how the man penis became elongated. You know that stitch right up under the, um, up under the sack of the male um, 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 testes? Mm -hmm. That used to be the vaginal opening. Mm. Except it is closed, and now you, I got a damn stitch up on that joint. <laughs> but that used to be the vaginal area in which that sealed off the falling out of the man from heaven. <laughs> known as the known as the known as the testicles, okay? Because the testicles are actually ovaries. At once ovaries, just like I told you that um, at one time the prostate gland used to be a womb, and that's why men, whenever the um, prostate gland becomes enlarged, he has very um, severe complications, okay? And he's bordering on the line of prostate cancer, or um, or he has a very different, very very difficult time of um, urinating, okay? as well as also sexual pleasure. Now, so that means that the head of the um, clit clitoris stimulates the heart. The part above that, the, um, or the realm, which, right, which is right where the skin is over top of, and that's what they actually used to cut in Africa with just the skin part in order to give, just like doing um, on circumcision, um, um, more of that particular, I guess we say, feeling. At one time, when they used to cut it properly, it used to give the woman more sensation. But since now, it seemed like, um, according to reports in which they, you know, we listen to Europeans, and, you know, I really don't believe too much of what they got to say. You know what I'm saying? I would have to um, ask um, people from Africa and from the villages in which that this is actually going on exactly how they do it nowadays. But back in the days, the only thing they used to do was just cut the skin. They never cut off the whole clitoris. Mm -hmm. that, that don't make sense. Just like back in the days, they never cut off the whole foreskin of the man. They just used to cut the cord. You know the cord in which that is up under the arm? Okay, for example, let me show you. You know the cord right here? There's a cord in which that attaches the skin that's on the shaft to the man. That cord was the only thing which that used to be, that, um, that was once cut, and that was circumcision. Now they cut off the whole damn foreskin in which that, if God didn't want it, did, then I'm pretty sure Nick would have been born with it. Mm. Okay? So the whole foreskin was not cut off. Just this cord was. What happened is that in order to cut down on penal cancer, or what is called um, 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 genital warts, okay, they, cut, they began cutting off you know what I'm saying, um, the whole quote-unquote skin. But if you teach a child or a little boy how to cleanse his um, genitalia properly, how to, you know what I'm saying, how to you know pull his skin back and teach him how to clean it properly, then he would never have any problem with any of that because that sper there's a um, this thing called sperma. Okay? Sperma. Sperma is that, is that substance in which that um, acts as a lubrication as the male enters into the vaginal area during sex, okay, that sperm is sometimes more like fish. You know what I'm saying? Same, same, thing, the same thing. Lips. The lips. Right. It's the same. It's the same exact thing. Mm. Okay. But that's that sperm. That that's what that does. It acts as a lubrication. That sperm on the on the on the, on the on female on the female lips acts as a lubrication in order to help adjust to the male going entering into her. So this is natural things that God put there in order to keep there. Mm -hmm. But because we cut off the skin, you know what I'm saying, of the, of, of the foreskin of the penis, then males don't have this natural um, um, lubrication anymore. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, some of the things in which that misconceptions in which that, you know, that's what I'm talking about. We're dealing with culture. Mm -hmm. In one culture, they'll tell you that this is the only way that God is going to permit it. If you go to a Jewish you know what I'm saying, um, 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 culture, then they're going to tell you that the only way which that you can get saved is if you were circumcised. But if you get any favor from God and enter into the gates of heaven is that if you're going to be circumcised. Okay? Well, hold on. Come to find out that this is an ancient African custom. So Europeans, you ain't really got nothing to say about this. This is something that we developed. <laughs> and the only reason why we developed it was because of the simple fact that we began to realize that, that's how one of the ways in which you cut down on penal cancer. Mm. 
Okay? Now, as well as also genital warts. Okay? Or what is called human um, pavodia um, um, virus. Yeah. Human papillo virus. Papilo, yeah. yeah, papilo. That's it. In which that, um, um, that um, have a tendency, you know what I'm saying, to, to um, happen if that foreskin is um, not, if, you know, if not clean properly. So that's how that whole thing um, came about. This is an ancient African custom. You can go to Egypt right now to Kemi and see them practicing circumcision. Mm -hmm. But they did not cut off the whole foreskin. Only the thing that was cut was this cord. And that would give the child the ability. So you got to understand that sometimes the hole, um, you know, in which that the child pee out of in, or the foreskin is sometimes too small to pull back over the top of the head. So it has to be worked with in order to stretch, okay? But sometimes the, the um, hole is too small. So that's where they also began circumcising from. But all thing you got to do is just actually put down the foreskin towards, the, um, towards this part here and cut that cord. And by cutting the cord, you release, you get what I'm saying? You give it more room in order to, to be pulled down. So that's how all of this coincides, okay? Now, I think they that spell. Now let's go on to this. Okay? The positions. These are the four major positions that you know everybody done practice at one time. Wait, you, okay, go back. You said um, all right, you were giving us like an in uh, oral sex, the different areas of right. healing for the man. Mm -hmm. And you said it's the exact same, same thing, thing for, for the woman. woman. Right. Matter of fact. Um, um, I'm getting ready to put up, okay, thanks, Queen. I go up, let me, let me throw up a, a canal, too. A vaginal canal. Okay. This, this is supposed to be the cervix bone, y'all, so don't laugh at me too much here. <laughs> but the canal, as we know, accommodates the penis. Well, the exact same way in which that accommodates the penis has the exact same reflexology within the woman. So, as you enter through, that's the heart. The next is the liver. Okay? The next is the lungs. Spleen. Pancreas. Okay? So the vaginal canal does the exact same thing as the male. That's what I meant by that. Okay? So that means in order to be for, for fully stimulation, for full stimulation, that's why when we talk about the shallow strokes, it's about here. Between the liver and the lung area where the G spot is located at. Okay? You take the word off the of liver, and what you got? You got live. So that's what is being stimulated as the man do those shallow strokes, okay? Is that he's building up the life aspect. He's building up the life force aspect during the shallow stroke techniques. Then as the deep thrust, okay? He's working on the rest of the um, major organs, in which that, of course, you know, once again, the pancreas, that helps with what? Diabetes, you know what I'm saying? Cause that stimulates what? The insulin flow. So that means that if the man is too short, and he's not stimulating this particular area, then that means the woman could develop diabetes. Mm. Because, yeah, 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 yeah. Because that area is not being stimulated in order to produce what aspect? You get what I'm saying? Okay. Now that might present a problem then. So that's why you can tell by the fingers. Well, I'm getting ready to get into it. Oh, okay. Don't, don't, hit, don't hit me over there, Queen. <laughs> I'm going to throw it over the board, then you can, then I'm going to let you hit it off. But, okay, before you go for Okay, okay. But, 
All right, and then I wanted you to do that on oral sex for a female, okay. too, what that stimulates, okay. too, just like well, that. That's, that's penis there. Right. No, no, this is, the, the, this is the canal. I just threw the penis up in there, but that's the canal. Okay. The canal, this this, this is what the vaginal canal right here. Okay. The G spot is within an inch to three inches. Right, that's and right here. Too, about the suspicions and they come out the back. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's what Mike call it. Tomorrow. <laughs> that's what Mike call it. Drink Mike call it drinking from the furry cup, bro. Um, I'm, 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 I'm gonna have to drink from the furry cup, okay, bro? Do your thing, man. <laughs> Submit himself <laughs> unto his woman, and the woman submits herself unto the man. And that's actually the only way in which that sex can actually get to the highest, you know what I'm saying, plateau, is through submission. That's why it tells Muslims to submit to the will of Allah. If Allah dwells within you, th that means in sex, that's who you're submitting to. It's to the will of Allah. And that's why the Quran tells you, you know, basically, you know, have as much sex as you want. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it tells that mess too. But they ain't gonna get me to that because I mean, But anyway, <laughs> for example, if the spleen area isn't being stimulated, okay, the spleen deals with what? The blood, okay, and the cleansing of the blood. That's what the spleen helps do. That means that, you know, the woman can end up with toxic blood, in which that can also end up producing what is called syphilis, gonorrhea, okay? Because you got to understand that this auric field, which from this magic wand is being emitted from the penis and is entering into the whole vaginal area or the, because um, Yusef Ben Yakinin told us that heaven is between the legs of the black woman. So if that's the case, then that means that man is trying to get back into heaven because he fell from a state in which that was um, 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 serene, pleasurable. Okay, that's why um, Muslims are told that um, with, um, um, if they um, commit suicide in the name of Allah, that they have 21 maidens waiting for them when they enter into heaven. Black eye maidens. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta give them something to forward on um, to look towards. <laughs> but the science is this: if the lung area isn't being stimulated properly, then it can end up with bronchitis can end up with um, um, asthma. And also, the science is also, is that it can heal bronchitis if it's done properly. It can heal asthma. It can heal um, um, poisons of the blood. It can heal um, improper flow of insulin into the pancreas. So it can also heal these particular areas if it's done properly. But it can also kill and destroy also, okay? Some of the shapes in which that the ancients used to know how to match up a couple also by the time that they went to puberty. Because it was actually during the time in which that the child, in which that we would recognize as a child in this society, in this day and time, was actually fit for marriage in the olden times. So that's what I'm talking about as far as culture. Culture changes even after this aspect of people, you know what I'm saying, come to find out that it was 13 when it was time for rites of passage in Africa, that that's also the same time that the man and woman were married off to each other. So this is how they used to um, um, put 
couples together was based on the facial features, based on the hands, based on the um, structure of the mouth, and also the shape of the head and those different structures, as well as also knowing the DNA pattern of the family members. For example, you know, you got Uncle Woodrow, you know what I'm saying, that you know that went crazy back in the days, you know what I'm saying, and shot up about, you know what I'm saying, and, and you know, and um, bowed an arrow about, you know, five, five or ten of his own village, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know that, uh, <laughs> that old Bethany Sue, uh, you know what I'm saying, that came from Jeff Rowe, might have some screws loose too. So, <laughs> so, 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 the, so the ancients kept records of that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, so in order to, you know, help cancel out, you know what I'm saying, well, Uncle Jeff Rowe might have um, caused up in there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, this is how the ancients used to work. And that's why that information was so scientific, as we would think that it's pseudoscience nowadays. We would think that, oh, astrology, yeah, you know, man. just like a brother came in here yesterday and Queen started breaking down to him about astrology. He was like, what? You tell me astrology really got something to do with this? He said, yeah, I just thought, you know, I'd give him a horoscope and that was it. You know what I'm saying? And Queen started breaking down, you know what I'm saying, the science behind it. And he was like, yo, I'm going to be back, yo. Yo, yo, I'm going to be back. You know what I'm saying? So he was, you know what I'm saying, because he was like thinking that, you know, that this ain't had nothing to do with anything, that this was just, you know, something that you, you know, you read in the newspaper and then that was it. You know, but the ancients also used the facial features in order to help with, um, with matching up. For example, a person who have a, um, um, a fat nose, as well as also thick lips, usually would have, um, for a woman, would have her lips of the vaginal area would be fat, and also her canal would be wide. Okay, in a high sex drive, exactly. And also, you know what I'm saying? Um, the, her canal will be also be short. Okay? So that means that a brother will also have to have the same features. As a matter of fact, especially if she have uh, fat fingers. Okay? She will also have to have a man with a thick penis. Okay? Or a fat penis, but it will also have to be short in order to help match up to. You know what I'm saying? The, um, the vaginal canal and the penis in order to get that proper reflexology going on or acupressure. Okay, because that's what you're doing is friction, pressure, heat, all that is with reflexology and that's all dealing with the healing aspect. Okay? Um, um, a brother who has um, a slender nose or slender lips and slender um, um, hands or fingers, then he will have a slender penis and um, his might be a longer penis, but it would be slender and he would have to find a woman with those similar features in order to, in order to fit his canal. I mean, in order for the, uh, uh, to fit uh, his penis to the canal in which that she has. So that means he would have to find some, a female who has some similar fingers, um, 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 a somewhat a narrow, not so much narrow nose, and maybe a thinner set of lips or whatever in order to make sure that he got, you know what I'm saying, a good fit. Right. Now, now it's not going to. It, only thing that does actually is just, in one sense, sometimes that cut off the flow of blood. Okay. Now they don't use the handkerchief; they use the little clips, the rings. Okay. The vaginal, um, the um, the um, the um, the penis rings. Right. And that will help. You know what I'm saying? Keep the man from going too far up inside of the woman's um, um vaginal area and hitting the striking the cervix bone. But that shit hurts. Okay, and um, so you know that's what that does. So um, now they use the um, you know use the rings, but as the queen said back in the days, they used um, a handkerchief or some type of um, rag in which they tied around the penis in order to help um, give it the appearance of, of fatter and also a shorter stock in order to help please a woman with a shorter um, um, and, um, and a more wider canal. Okay. Now, of course, you know, you got different features, you know what I'm saying, which that might mix. For example, you might find somebody with a narrow nose and thick lips, you know what I'm saying, and which that they have slender fingers, and which that actually um, she might have a medium, you know what I'm saying, size um, vaginal um, um, area, you know what I'm saying, like for average, the average um, penis length on a man is about six inches, okay? Now, back in the days, for African men, it used to be seven inches. Six inches for the Caucasian, five inches for the Asian, okay, or the Oriental, okay. Now, because of the foods in which that we've been eating, is about average out to six inches for every damn body, okay. If you notice, uh, Asians ain't this short no more. 
They're now arrow in my height. And talking about playing some damn basketball. I think you on basketball court. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, so, you know, they ain't, they ain't no four feet tall cats no more. You know, they come over and eat that McDonald's and that Mickey D's and that, Bur and that Burpin King. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shoot, they done got genetic um, um, food for days up stored up in there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dimples. Thank you. There you go. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Help me. Dimples. <laughs> All right, for a woman who have dimples, okay, um, um, means that she have a double double ring vagina. In other words, her cervix area can open in order to accommodate the length of a male's penis. So that means if the male has a longer penis, her cervix area will actually open up in order to accommodate him, and that's what is meant by a double ring um, um, area. But however, that can also cause the woman great pain. It, the male, he, he, he's satisfied, you know what I'm saying? He's happy as hell. Well, there's yeah. a tight fit, but it causing her pain. You know what I'm saying? A lot of prostitutes, you know what I'm saying, um, end up dying at a, of an early age because their vaginal, um, um, because of the cervix bone area will not close. Hmm. And which also gives them the ability not to have children too. Because of the ability not to have children. Because remember, your cervix area got to be, um, 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 what's the word? Um, diameter at a certain amounts in order to give forth to ha um, have children. You know what I'm saying? You know, like when you go to the doctor, you know, your um, the water breaks and they tell you, well, you only um, um, estimate this so much dilating this many centimeters and all that. In other words, the service area is only opening but so far. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it's not, it's not accommodating. So that's what all this is talking about too. You know what I'm saying? Is that type of information. So, you know, a woman with, um, with a double ring um, vagina, she has to be very careful about um, the length of the male's penis so that she, you know what I'm saying, can make sure that um, um, she don't have that, that, that intense pain in the abdomen area, okay? Now, a man with dimple um, usually means that, well, it's, it's two cases, Usually he will have a, um, a big penis in one sense, okay. In another sense, um, you know, well, you know, well, I get on the big penis thing. A big penis, you know, what I'm saying, can be helped out if the man do stretching ex exercises on his penis. He have to, you know, hold it with both hands when it's hard, and you know, work with it like that. You know, what I'm saying, in order to help unbend his penis, okay. And that's one of the um, things about um, about um, a person who has dimples, male, you know what I'm saying, male. Now also, a woman um, vaginal um, canal curves too when she has dimples. So that's probably one reason too about why the, um, the um, straighter penis, you know what I'm saying, or length of the penis will affect her more is because hers curves somewhat, okay? And if she were for male, you know what I'm saying, who's, you know, who's at attention, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, then that would give like a straight shot towards that, you know, towards that opening instead of curving, you know, to accommodate her, you get what I'm saying? So that's one of the things as far as with the dimples that, you know, we also got to watch out for. Um, okay, let me go into positions now, healing joints. All right. Um, this is like some of the positions, you know, the primary position is missionary style. Missionary style, if the woman is on top, what that does is help heal the low, the lowest um, um, area of the back. Okay, if she is the one in which that is um, um, gyrating, okay, what happens is that when she's gyrating on top, then that will help, okay, or either when the man is on top, okay, what it does is help heal in both instances, with either one on top is the small of the back. It activates also the Kundalini energy because of the way in which that the behind moves up and down. In other words, it creates like a wave. You know what I'm saying? And that wave is just like a frequency. It's setting off some type of motion. In other words, it's giving uh, um, a message to the body, which is also to the Kundalini energy that resides right here, 
at the small of the back, you know what I'm saying, to become stimulated in order to activate and to um, raise up. Sex is the quickest way in order to uh, reach spirituality and is also one of the most dangerous ways because when it's abused, then you become like a beast. Okay? And I get into that too, is that the science is, is that whenever you're dealing with this type of information, you got to also learn the secrets of pleasure. For example, you have to learn the science of sensual massage. Okay? The science of sensual massage, um, a holistic massage, as, there is, as it's also called. Therapeutic massage, as it's also called. Um, it would be good if you had some type of uh, foreplay in which that, that was included. Um, Reiki um, energy would be involved. Um, reflexology with the, um, with the ears, with the um, hands, with the feet will also be involved. Stimulation of the hands and feet. Could be from sucking on the fingers to sucking on the toes. Mm -hmm. Stimulating the, um, you know what I'm saying, the, um, you know, the, um. Now, for example, when you see the foot, yeah, let me go into the, into reflexology of the, of the body here right quick. <laughs> let, me, let me get to it. interesting because I, I selected a foot bath um, thing for a Christmas gift from from uh, one of the hospitals and I noticed on the box of it it's got reflexology on the on the oh, and it shows where the brain your first year the brain the liver the lungs mm -hmm. and each one of those spots exactly. uh, and all. newspaper that North Carolina is going to be losing a lot of um, a lot of the um, of the um, doctors because of the of, of the increase uh, insurance policies mm. um, um, matter of fact malpractice insurance to be particular mm -hmm. so you know that means that no that means North Carolina has no choice but to turn to alternative healing mm -hmm. that's the reason why they took Geronimo's idea at Cape Finn and got that shit rolling because uh, they know that that's going to be the next move for this particular year as well as for the next future, you know, for uh, for the next years coming on out. And you know, I noticed on a lot of the cases I've been typing lately, they're doing yoga. Oh, good. Oh, uh, so hope, but just about, I mean, all through the day, I'm getting stuff where people are doing yoga as part of their, you know, regimen, healing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Sure. Mm -hmm. Deepak Chopra. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you see how alternative healing is coming big, and we at the, now we sitting at the helm of this, y'all, you know what I'm saying? So that means that, you know, we need to get Reiki qualified, mm -hmm. get yoga qualified, get every qualification we can. Because we're going to be. Some money, nigga, so y'all can get that. Bingo. Because cause people going to be coming, and there's going to be a lot of sick people out here due to the way in which that this society is set up. Because Everybody this is lining problem. up to get the smallpox vaccines at um, Cape Fear? Mm -mm, no, uh, Womack more Womack. so. It was yeah. on the news, Cape Fear Valley, Real? too. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. They can go on and get it. Yeah, they, can, <laughs> hey, they can line up by themselves. They don't have no idea because they're not dealing with this information. Yeah, I'm, I'm not they trying They have been scared into doing it. They can line up by themselves. Reflexology, more complicated um, copy, 
what I got over on the board is the easiest way in order to remember. Okay? trying to read that's intestines that's stomach this is head shoulders chest stomach intestines genitalia same here head shoulder chest stomach intestines genitalia head shoulder chest stomach intestines genitalia okay and that's the quickest way that you can remember this and through that and through um, that um six um um process so that's at the bottom of the ear this is head. The earlobe is the head. Yeah. Shoulder, chest, stomach, intestines, genitalia. The toes and the top of the fingers is head. Shoulder, chest, stomach, intestines, genitalia. Just think of so many movies now. They're making so much fun of feet. Mm -hmm. You know how they how they're doing like women's feet, talking about a uh, hammer toes and stuff yeah. like that. Women, but our feet need that loving. <laughs> yeah. See? Especially hammer toes. Especially. <laughs> especially the hammer toes. Okay. Especially the hammer toes, huh? Hammer toes. Hammer toes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can't touch them. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Um, if you look at the earlobe, the earlobe actually look like a fetus. If you ever notice, look at the person's earlobe. The earlobe look like a fetus. Okay, look like a baby. Look like two little babies been attached to your side of your head. <laughs> okay, that represents the twin nature of Cain and Abel. Okay, the twins um sign also um of um of um Gemini. Okay, um, that's why you got one mouth and you got two ears because um, you need to um, listen twice as much as you talk, as the old saying goes. But the science is that the ear is a fetus in its picture. So the earlobe represents the head because it looks like a fetus is coming out head first. You get what I'm saying? So... Whenever you have a headache, migraines, you will massage your earlobe. You have headaches and migraines, you will massage your earlobes. Think about it. The science is that why you think you get a earring right in the middle of your earlobe? Yeah. What you tapping into? You tapping into the center of your brain, which is the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. That is permanent acupuncture. Mm -hmm. In other words, that to give you constant stimulation of your pineal gland. That's the reason why the ancients used to pierce their ears. Now yeah. we took it as a fad and don't understand why the ancients did what they did. Mm -hmm. But that was the real science. So, the next part is the chest area, which is right over top of, which is right here, which is this area right here, is the shoulder area, this part right here, which is that, which is attached right there. Okay, that's the shoulder area. So you have problems, um, problems in your shoulders, you will rub that part right there. Okay? That part will be stimulated. With the chest, okay, or with the breast area, that would be this part right here. So that would be stimulated. Okay? Stomach area would be directly inside of your ears, right in this hollow area right here mm. and then you just take your fingers and circular motion 
or either just press on it as in terms of acupressure. Acupressure when you just press on it for approximately three to six seconds. Reflexology is when you press but you are circulating or moving your fingers in a circular manner. Okay? So that's the stomach. The intestines in the same manner except it will be closer near the hole of the ear. Okay? That's usually if you have any problem with the digestive system or whatever, you can put your fingers in your ear in that hole and circulate and press on that area. And that helps with the um, problems in the digestive system, helps with problems in, um, 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 for example, you got gas, you got stomach ulcers, you have um, problems with bowel um, um, absorption, you have problems, um, any types of, um, of those problems, that's where you can put your hand at. Now, right here at the top, Right around this rim right here is the genitalia area. You would put your finger in this area. It's right here in this loop. Right here. Right in this loop right here. That's the genitalia area. That will help heal um, problems in the genitalia area as well as stimulate healing energy to that particular area in your physical body. Okay? The outside of your ear, this whole rim, is the spinal column. So any problems with the spine, you would rub this area, this whole rub area of your ear, okay? Same thing with the foot. The toes represents the head. The pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the hypothalamus gland, the, um, hypo, um, um, the thalamus gland, the, um, the frontal lobes, all of this can be reached here at the toes area. All the portions of the five um, um, chambers in the brain, um, with the cerebral fluid, um, the cere um, cerebellum, the cerebrum, the reptilian portion of the brain, the limbic system, um, the, um, the mammal portion of the brain, all that can be reached right here at the toes. So a person who's um, um, doing foreplay and sucking on the toes, you think about it. Why do you think people enjoy um, 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 nibbling on the earlobes? You know what I'm saying? Blowing in the ears or nibbling on the, um, you know what I'm saying, on the, um, on, the, on the ear. You feel it all over your body. It's the tingling effect in which that can be felt, you know what I'm saying, all over your body. That energy is being sent, sent and transmitted to those particular organs in order to help heal the particular area which that you're nibbling on, you know, sucking on, or um, stimulate. Okay? That's the purpose of foreplay, is to first begin to consciously activate the healing aspect within each of, um, of the individuals. Okay? So, as this goes on, you know, you got to um, realize that this has to be done consciously. So right here, we go to the feet, or to the foot, you find um, the shoulder area right up underneath the pad. That's the pad area. Okay, that's the that's the pad right here. Okay, the ball. Um, um, that's, that's not called the ball. That's called it is called the ball. The foot. Yeah, they call it the ball. I don't know why they call it the ball, but heel ball. Okay, call it the ball. That area helps with the shoulder problems. Help with um, um, this upper ch um, chest um, area as well as the neck area. Okay. Okay, it helps with stimulating of the thyroid glands and the parathyroid glands. Okay, that's what the area does. It helps also with the thymus gland and with the immune system. The, um, the limbic system, the, um, the lymphatic system, or what is called the um, lymph, for, um, lymph noids. Okay, which helps with the cleansing of toxins and poison from out your body. That's what it does. So by stimulating that particular area, that's what you stimulate. Okay? Right here, right along this arch, what's called an arch, and the reason why you're supposed to have an arch because that's that is symbolic to the arch in your back. Because that's the spine area. That's why you have arch in your foot in order to um, 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 give you that support of spine. That's why your feet is directly connected to your um, to your back. If your feet feel bad, what happens to your back? Back feels bad. Back feel bad. So if you have fallen arches, usually you'll, you'll have problems with your back area. If you have um, high arches, real high arches, then you have problems with your back area. Right? The arches have to be um, 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 yet so. <laughs> okay? Something like that. And
So in order to have a, um, a, um, a, um, a good back, feet, you know what I'm saying, you should have arches in them. That's why um, back in the days the military did not take people with flat feet was because they knew that the arch was important to the spine. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have a man, you know what I'm saying, in combat, and this nigga going to be complaining about his damn back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That ain't gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Sarge's gonna put a foot in your ass. You gonna put this same foot. <laughs> and your ass will tell you, boy, you better run on them damn flat ass feet. But so that's the whole science in that. All right, the next part is the chest. Okay? This area stimulates the heart. Okay, any problem with the heart, you will um, press directly in this area right here, in the center. And that will help with um, heart, with the um, heart. Okay, um, that area on here would be right here, right in this area right here. That's what that area is. Okay, that little area right there. Now, below that is the stomach area, digestive problems, you know what I'm saying? Any type of those problems, that would be stimulated right here in this particular area as well as also with the intestines. The last part is the heel area. The heel area deals with the genitalia area, okay? Also, the lymphatic system is right here, up under, you know, um, um, the bone right here, in which that is like a knot near the ankle. Right underneath it is your lymph node, um, your lymphatic system. So if you press on both sides of your ankle, that will help, um, 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 with the removing of the toxins and poison from out your lymphatic system, okay? Also, between the toes, and you press between the toes with the, um, the skin between the toes, that will help also with the removal of the um, um, of poisons and toxins from out the lymphatic system, okay? I'm giving you that key because those are important with the lymphatic system because that deals with the immune system, and we're going to need that as we continue progressing, you know what I'm saying, that those areas specifically need to be stimulated you know what I'm saying? Especially in a time of sex, because that's when you're the most sensitive in order for this energy can actually, you know, have its most healing effect. The next is the um, top of the fingers. That deals with the head. The, um, the pointer finger, that's the pineal gland. You know what I'm saying? This finger here is the pituitary gland. You know what I'm saying? Well, some say that this is the pineal gland. Some say this is the pituitary gland. Um, this here is the hypothalamus gland, thalamus gland. Okay? The thumb happens to um, um, be with the, um, I guess you can say the extension of the reptilian part of the brain or the limbic system, and all of these are stimulated um, by the massaging of this particular area. It can be pressed lightly as in for an active pressure, three to six seconds, intervals, okay? Or it can be stimulated as a reflexology, okay? The whole area, the nails, you know what I'm saying, the cuticle, the um, areas on the side, front, back, the whole, this whole area right here with this line, where the lines um, separates the sections of the fingers at. That's the head area. The shoulders and the chest, this is the shoulders area right here. The chest deals right up on the hip. Okay? Matter of fact, right here, and it is going towards the center of the palm, is actually where the heart is. So this will be stimulated. Okay? Matter of fact, in palmistry, this is what is called the head line. That's called the head line. The top line is the head line. This line here is the um, heart line. This line here is the fate line. This line here is the life line. So that means the heart line falls right there. And that's exactly where you can press at. And that's the reason why they call this the heart line. Because in order to get the heart functioning properly, you will massage that particular area. Okay? The stomach intestines is this area right here, right here near the life line. Because they call right here on the map right near the lifeline area is the um, intestines and stomach. And because in your colon is 360 lobes. And within each of those lobes, 
Now 360 is what? Is the magic number of 3 plus 6 plus 0 is 9. And plus 360 deals with what? A circumference of a square or of what? Circular information. The square represents physical knowledge. The circle represents spiritual knowledge. So it just happens that 360 lobes are located near your colon. And within each of those lobes is a, is a crystal. So actually you have 360 crystals near your colon area. So in order to stimulate those particular crystal glands, or those crystal, not glands, but crystals, you know what I'm saying, elements, you know, this area here will be stimulated. And this will help with the digestive um, system, help with um, 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 reabsorption of nutrients and minerals, also help with um, releasing of defecation of toxins, poisons, worms, parasites, and viruses, and those types of things which that is harmful to the body. All right, the last is this area here, which is the palm area as well as right here around this, this um, area is the genitalia area, okay? Um, this area right here helps with the genitalia area. If you massage this area of, you know what I'm saying, or this area over here, it's right up on this, this palm of the, of the hand right here. That's the genitalia area. Okay? If you, if you press right here in between your fingers, that's your lymphatic system. So you would press your fingers just like you would between your toes in order to help stimulate the lymphatic system. Okay? A person who's a good natural path he can um, have, take your hand and massage this area right here and find out if um, um, how much toxins is built up in your system. If it's real um, flexible and malleable, then you're doing pretty good. But if it's kind of hard, you know what I'm saying, then that means you have a buildup of, um, of um, toxins in your body. And he can actually tell just from by massaging that area if you, um, um, if you um, can develop cancer or not. Okay. So this is the science of the stimulation, the sucking on the fingers during sex is what stimulates um, the head area, the shoulder area, down to the chest area, okay, and it acts just like reflexology, just like the penis does, okay, and the same um, concordance, okay, same thing with the toes, you know what I'm saying, stimulating the toes, kissing the on feet, same thing with the ears, and nibbling and kissing on the ears. Okay, same thing. Matter of fact, uh, when you kiss on the back of the um, individual, that also helps with the um, with the energies being, um, I guess you would say, extended to the rest of the parts of the body, because the back represents the conduce, the conducing, because the spine is the conducing of, of of electromagnetic energy. It's the receiver and the transmitter of that energy. So whenever you know you kissed on the back, that energy expands to the rest of the five appendages. appendages which is the head, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, you know what I'm saying, which is a law, A-L-L-A-H, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, okay? The next thing is the position. I think we're finally here now. Okay. After this, I'm going to give you all some formulas as far as the herbs to take in order to help strengthen. The, um, the um, genitalia area, as well as also some nutrients and minerals and stuff that we um, probably need also. Um, you know, the basic position is missionary. As I was saying before, the male or female on top, that stimulates the um, activation of the Kukulini energy, okay? Also, it helps with um, the alignment of the discs in your back. It helps put the discs in the back, back um, um, into order. Okay, matter of fact, before you even begin sexual intercourse, it's good that the male and the female drink at least um, 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 16 ounces of water before they even begin sexual intercourse because you lose a lot of water during the sexual act. There should be some water next to the bed, you know what I'm saying, um, um, for, um, for drinking, you know, while the actual act is going on. Also, um, water lends into the astral plane because remember, um, astral plane deals with um, liquid, okay, and liquid deals with um, the, um, the area where the kundalini energy resides at, which is right here at the navel chakra. So that water element helps deals with 
the activation of the Kukulini energy also, okay? Um, dehydration also is what it said that dehydration is one of the um, two leading causes to death, actually. It ain't heart attacks, it ain't AIDS. You know what I'm saying? Dep um, sleep deprivation means not getting enough sleep, and um, 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 dehydration are the two leading causes, you know what I'm saying, to us you know, leaving this planet at a quicker rate. Okay? So water should be um, 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 placed near the bed. Um, also, um, some central massage oil, um, music if you choose to, you know what I'm saying? Music, 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 you know what I'm saying, in which that, you know, that helps, you know what I'm saying, um, help um, produce um, the central um, atmosphere, you know what I'm saying, necessary. No, no, I, I was getting ready to say the type of music, too. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Uh, meditation music can be used. Native American music can be used. Um, Luther Vandross is always good. You know what I'm saying? To get in the mood. Um, um, a little bit of Joe might help. You know what I'm saying? Throwing a little bit of um, Jaheen. <laughs> no ludicrous. <laughs> yeah, no ludicrous. Please, no ludicrous. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No Nelly. It's getting hot in here. Take up all your clothes. You know what I'm saying? You know, that might help. That might help as a pre as a pre-start. <laughs> that might help in the preliminary. You know what I'm saying? Be before, you know, the actual act, but not while it's going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please don't PD Pablo. Thank you, please. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> please, no PD Pablo. Exactly. So <laughs> now what Right, right, so exactly. Um, when a man is moving up underneath the woman and the woman is still, what that does for him is help heal the kidney area as well as the, um, the um, small of the back area and activates the kundalini energy. Now, the kidney area, the kidneys, as we know, deals with the water element also. So that's also um, the reason why is because the kidneys play a large part in the establishment of the fluids in your body, okay? In order for the fluids, in order to um, um, be regulated properly, they come through your kidneys, to your prostate gland, to your spinal fluid, you know, your prostate fluid, your spinal fluid, and your cerebral fluid. It comes through your kidneys. So your kidneys play a very important part. So that means if you're dehydrated, that means that the kidney area, um, in order, um, um, after you get enough water in your system, in order to help rejuvenate the kidneys and get them back into order, the man will um, move from up underneath the woman, and the woman will um, stay still. As he's moving from up and up underneath, okay. So the one moving is the one getting healed. Bingo, bingo. Okay. Now, of course, you know you can both join in in the um in the in the festivities. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But but I'm, I'm just giving you a you know what I'm saying a little synopsis on what actually happens and what what heals you know what I'm saying within each individual. The person also on top also. A lung, um, the um, the lung um, um, also takes manifest a healing. Okay, the lungs also manifest a healing. For example, when a man is on top, the reason why um, he has, that, for example, if the man is on top of missionaries. Um, sometimes he um, um, he will orgasm too quickly because he he has not learned how to regulate his breath. Mm. Okay, in order to um, uh, you can't be breathing 18 breaths a minute, which is the beast breath. You know what I'm saying? While you are, um, um, while you are um, um, in a um, sexual intercourse state, because the faster that, because the faster that you breathe, the quicker you will orgasm. So the science is to slow down your breath, okay? You know, males, slow down your breath so that you know you can last just as long as the woman. You know what I'm saying? So that she can also receive the pleasure of the orgasm and um, and, um, and the benefits of that of the um, of the um, particular release. Because that's the release of yin energy, which is magnetic energy, in which that is healing energy. Okay? Um, the next, um, um, the woman on top. Um, the woman on top, that helps um, um, heal within the woman. That's the general oil healing um, um, position. That help heals everything within the woman is when the woman is on top. Because that is shooting the energy straight up from the magic wand um, um, up to stimulating the, um, the kundalini energy, which is um, right here. You know what I'm saying? Right. Matter of fact, when the male is inside of the woman, um, he actually is tapping 
on where the Kundalini energy resides at. Okay? Which is right. Um, oh, okay, let me, let me show you. I'm going to feel a woman. Okay. Just imagine this is being the um, vaginal canal right here. Okay, this little skin, little thin skin in which that separates the vaginal canal from the anus. But right above the anus area and above the vaginal canal area is where sits what's called the kanda, or what's also called the kunda egg, in which that this is where the kundalini energy resides at. Okay? It is here in which that that's what you actually stimulate is the life principle. Okay? And that life principle, in order to, um, um, to manifest the highest potential of life, it has to be stimulated properly. Okay? Now, also, when a man is up underneath, and if he moves, and if he's moved from up underneath the woman, what he's also is healing is his heart. Okay, he's healing his heart. Okay, if he's moving up underneath her. That's what is being healed within him is the heart. So if he has any blockages there, at first it would be discomfort, and then eventually um, he would get um gain a breath, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, you know what I'm saying, in which that would help release the tension and release the frustration and the um, you know, the hurt and the anger in which that has been built up there, crystallized around his heart chakra, you know what I'm saying, from probably um not being, you know, told enough as a child that he was loved or shown, you know what I'm saying, shown proper love elements. Okay, that's usually what makes a man real bitter. Is that if he didn't have a father in his life, then, you know, and um, if he wasn't told that, you know, he was loved by the um, by the parents or by the mom, you know what I'm saying, then there's some type of buildup of anger and frustration that's there within the heart chakra in which that has to be released. This, this particular position helps release that. Okay? Next is the um, doggy style, okay? And you know, you know, the Snoop Doggy Dog favorite position. <laughs> <laughs> but the science is, is that the man, what he's doing is activating the kundalini energy, but he's also helping um, build up the um, muscles in his back as well as also um, the chest area. In other words, it's dealing with actually um, um, the structure of the, um, of, the, of the muscles. So this is taps into the muscle um, aspect of the man, okay, and also on the um, the healing energy in which that it shoots directly up to the head of the female in this, in this particular position. In other words, what this does is activate the kundalini energy within the woman and sends the energy directly to the head. Okay, in other words, this is the this is also uh, for the woman uh, all healing purpose um, um, position. Okay. Um, next is the 69. Of course, we went um, through the um, reflexology and acupressure, but this also deals with, um, like you say, with the um, penis and with the, um, with, the clito um, with the clitoris, as well as also with the um, vaginal canal. That you know, that that's what is being stimulated is the head, the um, the um, liver, the um, lungs the spleen, and the pancreas. That's what is being stimulated um, from the oral sex aspect of the 69. And being that you're in the yin-yang position, that means that you have created a unified field. In other words, this is when what is called the uraeus has encircled both individuals. Okay? The uraeus is the auric field or what is called the auric egg, is also known as Brahma egg, or the Brahmic egg, okay? And this stimulates healing within both individuals, all-purpose healing also position, okay? This is also an all-healing purpose position, because it deals with toning up the heart, toning up the lungs, toning up the liver, toning up the spleen, toning up the pancreas. It tones up all of those aspects 
because of the reflexology and the acupressure in which that is being stimulated to those particular um, glands and organs. Okay? So that means that this position helps release toxins. That's what actually sex does. Okay? Matter of fact, a half a cup of water is released. Um, 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 that means at least four ounces of water is released during at least an hour and a half of, um, of good sex. Okay? That's how much pers um, perspiration. Oh, no, no, no. Let me get it right. Pers Preparate. What is it? Perspiration. Pers per thank you. You'll get it right. <laughs> it's released. Okay, from both individuals, two ounces a piece. All right. Um, the last thing. Oh, okay, okay. Some of the herbs in which that the male need. Some of the herbs that the male need is Damiana. Okay, the woman can also take Damiana. Don Quai. The male ginseng. So Flamento. Non quiet. Let me get that back over here. For the one. Okay. Kelp. Um, sassafras, as the sister just been saying. And actually, can be drunk by both. Sarsaparilla. Pumpkin seeds. Okay. Those are um, some of the um, healing herbs as far as in which that helps with, um, I guess you would say, testosterone and the estrogen levels within male and female. Don Quai and Daviana helps within the woman estrogen um, levels. It helps bring back the estrogen levels back into balance. Um, if the woman has lost her desire for sex, then she would take these herbs in order to put her back into a state of sexuality, or um, um, actually they become what is called um, an aphrodisiac. Okay? Kelp is good because it helps regulate the endocrine gland system. Specifically taps into iodine, which that helps with the thyroid, which helps Helps with the um, 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 the molecular structure, or what's called the um, um, the circulatory system. Okay, the heating aspect. Also, it helps with the um, pituitary gland in the brain, as well as uh, with the um, pancreas and the spleen. Kelp is very good for the endocrine gland system. Sassafras um, deals with um, increasing. Um, those levels of hormones within the male to female. Okay, sarsaparilla does the same thing. Um, pumpkin seeds has a large abundance of zinc. That's what males need. Males need zinc in order to help produce um, semen. Okay, zinc um, in supply has to be at least I would say 30 milligrams a day. Uh, for men who have um, um, who um, have sex a lot, then um, and ejaculate. You know what I'm saying? Then they need at least 100 milligrams a day. But the science, once again, is to injaculate. By injaculating, you bring all of the life force energy back up into your body and bring it right back up into the head area. And you can use that energy as mental food, or as they say, food for thought. It's mental energy now, because this energy is not expended or extended from outside of yourself. It's kept inside of the body, and you have involuted instead of evoluted. Okay. Um, so plemento helps with the prostate gland. Okay, there's another one called pycnium. A pycium. Pygium. Okay. 
cream that works very well with soft pimento in order to help with the prostate. Within the man. Okay? Ginseng. Ginseng, um, the woman can also drink if she chooses to. Um, um, it also helps with the sexual um, desire. It intensifies it. It also helps with um, the extending of your life as well as also helping maintain your life force. Okay, ginseng is one of the oldest roots. Matter of fact, we had some ginseng and um, the ginseng um, when we got inside the bottle actually have the root in which that, you know, which is probably the best thing. That's the ginseng root right there. Okay, read on the back of the bottle. It has, um, has a lot of um, vitamin C, 23%, um, you know what I'm saying? And then you read about ginseng, and you find out how much healing properties that it has, and the reason why the Orientals, um, you know, drink, you know what I'm saying, so much of it, because it helps with the um, 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 longevity, okay? Um, so this is some of the um, science as far as the herbs, okay? Now, some of the, um, <coughs> what is called homeopathic products, Tazin phosphate. Tazin phosphate deals with the head area. Remember, um, sexual is a mental thing. Potassium and phosphate. Phosphate deals with light. So phosphate helps put light back into the system. Potassium is what you eat from out of bananas and um, matter of fact, bananas and certain other fruits has a high um, count of potassium. Potassium helps with the electrical magnetic force in your body as well as phosphate helps with um, creating that electromagnetic force in your body or the light principle in your body. So, potassium phosphate is one of the um, primary um, homeopathic products is definitely necessary for the health with stimulation of the brain. in which that um, a person might develop, for example, um, yeast infections, okay, um, 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 candidas, okay, those things deals with yeast, and uh, matter of fact, male and female can both um, have that. So the thing is, is that potassium sulfates um, helps um, eliminate, you know what I'm saying, the yeast within the womb, matter of fact. When a woman um, has a yeast infection, the best thing I can tell her is to douche with garlic, okay, or take um, yogurt. It has to be live cultured yogurt and place um, a teaspoon of that inside of her vaginal area, okay. Within a matter of minutes, okay, the yeast infection would um, begin to level off. And within a day, you know what I'm saying? Oh, by the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? She did that in the morning time. Uh, she won't have no problems at all. Okay? Now, so these are just some of the um, homeopathic products that one would take in order to um, get that going. Okay? Also, you have... Um, Lime phosphate, which is also calcium phosphate, um, in which that helps with um, the bone structure. The 
the bone marrow, okay, um, it helps with, um, I guess you would say, helping the bone structure. The bones is also, with, um, as the scientists will tell you, that um, blood is helped um, um, supply from. So that means from the bone marrow. So that means that the bones is necessary as far as in what? The production of your semen. Because when a male orgasm or a female orgasm, you actually feel it throughout your whole internal, um, um, internal system, your, your skeletal system, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere. So this helps with um, um, having all of those particular um, energies in order. And once again, you're dealing with light. Phosphate, look up the word phosphate, and you're dealing with light. This has connections with light. Okay? Potassium deals with the helping and the production of light. So this is just some of the um, homeopathic products in which that um, we would need. Okay? Now let's get to the vitamins and minerals. just some of the um, minerals and vitamins that I put up here on the board. Actually, what you'll find is that on a daily basis, your body needs over 65 minerals in your diet in order to make sure that, um, that your body is functioning properly. If you notice, as I said before, that you got these words right here, okay? is the um, prefix for that, right? So vital and vitalized deals with what? Vitality, vitality means what? That which is what? Alive. Something vital is something that which is important, okay? So that means that vita, um, a vite means something that which is you have to have that's important and that you have to have in order to have you, to give you life, I should say. Amen is what? It means within ancient Kimmy, the hidden God. Or the hidden substance. They call it the hidden substance because you can't see vitamins. Something that you got to um, analyze up on a microscope. Okay? You see the food, but you don't see the hidden properties inside of the food in which that helps give you life. Okay? So that's what you have is vitamins, which is part of our men, and then men, other roles. Men, once again, is part of the same aspect of our men, the hidden, and then which is Ra, and then El, or Al, which is God. Okay? So, the hidden sun God, that's what that means. The hidden sun God. Minerals are the hidden sun particles, or the hidden sun God. In other words, without minerals, your body can't absorb vitamins. So you can take all the vitamins, but if you don't have enough of the minerals in order to correlate, you know what I'm saying, then it won't be um, absorbed into your body. And therefore you will have what's called malabsorption. In other words, that means food will just be passing out that you can use, you know what I'm saying, in order to help build your structure because you don't have enough vitamins and enzymes, then your body can't metabolize the vitamins, in which that is part of the food. So therefore you end up depleted of the of these nutrients. Okay? Vitamin A, and you know vitamin A deals with, um, with um, the healing 
of, um, of skin. It deals with the um, um, aspect. Matter of fact, carrots, yams have a large supply of vitamin A in them. Okay? These um, um, vitamin A, once again, deals with the skin, the hair, the nails. It also deals with um, 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 the pancreas and the nutrient center of the navel chakra also. Because of the orange color, the orange color has the influence on the navel chakra, which is the nurturing center, which is also the home of the, of the um, structure of the DNA. So this color orange helps with the structure and the maintenance of the DNA cellular structure. So that means that that's what vitamin A does. Vitamin C helps with the teeth, it helps with um, your skin, it helps with, um, um, you know, with your blood. It helps um, um, destroy um, um, bacteria and viruses and parasites and worms. Okay? Matter of fact, when you, when you wake up in the morning, you need to drink an eight ounces cup of, um, cup of water and squeeze a half a lemon into, um, into the water and drink that every day. That will help put vitamin C into your system for that day. Okay? Because if you don't know, that scientists will tell you that vitamin C is dormant are shut down within our system. If we had um, um, the, um, the, um, the code for vitamin C activated in our system, then we would live to be over 120 years old. But because it's shut down, we have to um, replenish ourselves on fruits and vegetables in order to get the proper amount of vitamin C. So this is the, uh, one of the codes. That's what we're trying to get activated also, one of the key codes in which that we're going to try to develop some type of formula for in order to activate this, this so-called dormant um, um, sleeping um, mineral, I mean vitamin, excuse me. Um, vitamin D, um, as we know, comes from the sun. You get vitamin Z from the sun. You don't need to drink milk. You don't need to drink um, um, any um, of that. Uh, vitamin, C com uh, vitamin D comes from the sun. You stand out in the sun for approximately 20 minutes, then um, you um, um, basically have received enough of the um, vitamin D you know, and what happened is that vitamin D actually is a hormone. And this hormone is reabsorbed um, from the surface of your skin as an oil, and then it reabsorbs its, um, back into the skin and then into your bloodstream. So that's how vitamin D um, happens. As you know, vitamin D deals with, um, with um, calcium. Okay, and, uh, um, and, uh, um, and calcium deals with the, um, with the metabolizing of vitamin D. Matter of fact, vitamin D helps with the um, building up of your quote unquote. Um, melan melanin. Okay, B complex. B complex. Um, um, basically, you, you got from niacin all the way to um, folic acid. Okay, that's that's part of your um, um thiamine. Um, 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 well, you got vitamin B three, vitamin B four. You know, what I'm saying go all through the whole list. And the B complex, what that does is help with. Um, the blood it helps with the um, um, with the, um, with the maintaining of the organs and the glands in the body. Okay. Vitamin E. Vitamin E um, um, helps with also with the skin, the hair, the nails. It also helps with removing plaque from out of the arteries. 